Hi, Nikolai. How are you? Hello. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, you? Now, um, you're going to tell us something? You are. I mean, Nikolai, you're, you're the director of the latest production of Beautiful Thing, aren't you? Jonathan Harvey's it's correct, yes. Evergreen it's play. Last week at the um, Art Theatre in London. Yes. How's it going? It's going really well, thank you. It's been quite um, an amazing experience. We had our press night last Wednesday and we've had across the board really fantastic reviews so oh, both on a personal level it's great to get you know acclaimed for of our course. production but also for jonathan you know this play that's been around now for 20 years yes. and still to get these incredible notices and for people to you know still adore it as much as they did 20 years ago is, is such an amazing I, yeah. thing i think i think they do really i mean i love I haven't actually seen the play, I've seen the film. Uh -huh. um, and I absolutely love it. And I remember when I first saw it, and it, was, it resonated very strongly for me as a younger gay man at the time for two reasons. One, that it, because it was a, 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 a play, a, a film in this case, or a coming out story, a tender uh, a love story. Yeah. Um, whereas at the time, you may remember um, that m many of the, the gay films that were, were, were out at the time were about AIDS and dying, actually. Um, yeah. And this wasn't about that, and it was so liberating for me. So Yeah, and I think, I think the, both the film and the play still, well, they absolutely stand the test of time, because to see a gay relationship presented just with such honesty and tenderness yes. and love and genuine affection, and there's, you know, it's not about you know, uh, some of the more negative aspects that, you know, sometimes are presented by the media or, yes. you know, filmmakers uh, in, in popular culture for it to just be about two people falling in love and they just happen to be gay. You know, that's a rather remarkable thing even today, I think. I mean, if you look at the way gay people are portrayed in soaps or in kind of mainstream popular culture, it's still, the issue is still very much about being gay. Yes. Rather, you know, in this story, it just so happens that these two people who fall in love, they just happen to be gay. And I think it was ahead of its time then. It was. And in it many was. ways, it's still ahead of its time now, I think. Yes, I think so, absolutely, and uh, it's, I think it's still as relevant today as it was when it was first written. And what I find remarkable is that Jonathan wrote it when he was only 25, yeah. which is extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think that's why the play speaks, well, not speaks, it sings so loudly yes. and with such a kind of beautiful, pure kind of sound, because it is this very, it, it's, you know, it's a kind of declaration of love, really. I mean, yes. he, you know, he spilled his imagination onto a piece of paper and you know there it is warts and all and it's so honest and so straightforward and so direct and i suppose you know it, it, it that's he wrote it when he was young and and, yes. and that kind of youth and that innocence yes. it's a that, freshness about it yeah exactly yeah absolutely i mean the, the one of the wonderful things about uh, the, the film and i'm sure the play is that actually it's really funny yeah, and the it's jokes very still, funny. It is very yeah. funny, and the jokes yeah. still stack up. Even now, yeah. they still stack up. I still watch the film now and again, because it is one of my favourite films. So, uh -huh. um, and Yeah, the, we, we struggled a bit with that um, in previews, to be honest with you, because it is so funny, and Jonathan is absolutely the king of not just one-liners, yeah. but kind of situation comedy. And what the problem we've had, weirdly, is that the laughs just keep coming. And, you know, for the actors, this is quite a naturalistic play, and you yes. just think, well, when it, what, are we, what are we meant to do? Are we meant to stop <laughs> and just wait for the stop. laughs to finish? But then the play stops, and yeah. any kind of attempt at realism or, you know, believing in the circumstance and the character yeah. kind of stops while we just wait that for must, the laughs. That must be really, I had not thought of that. It must be really difficult to keep that continuity going. Yeah, well, it is. It's weird. And I've, I mean, I've done comedy before, and, you know, you're doing a Noel Coward or a big you know, a big comedy, you know, you kind of know that you stop and you surf the laugh and then you kind of carry yeah, on. Yeah. But with this, because it's kind of a heightened realism, it's a very naturalistic yes, play. Yes. What, what do you do? Do you just stop and wait for the laugh and then carry on? It's been a really interesting thing for the actors and I to learn, really, how to kind of handle, handle the comedy and handle the way the audiences, you know, respond to it, which yeah. is... It's a fantastic thing to learn because it's, a, you know, it's a, a really affirming thing that they're loving it so much that they're literally rolling around in the aisles and laughing their heads off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that the um, the actors laugh along with the audience? Well, well, this is the weird thing because a lot of the time the audience aren't laughing at necessarily a joke that's funny. It's yep. more about the situation and yep. often the situation can be very moving and very, you know, it's a, it's a point of real drama. Yes. Um, and that's the genius of Jonathan's writing. That, And that's why people laugh, because they either recognise themselves in that coming out scene with their mother 
yes, or yes. They, they just recognize the situation from their mates. So actually the actors are playing a very tender or very serious theme um, and it elicits laughter out of kind yes. of recognition or, yes. you know, that, that kind of nervous uh, sense when you laugh when, you know, something maybe not actually, it's not actually a joke. It's, it's the fact that you, you recognize yes. the tenderness of, the, of that moment, the reality of that moment. Do so you think it resonates different ways for different people? Yeah, it's been fascinating. We've not really had one audience that's responded in the same way. There's no kind of consistency of when they laugh, when they cry. It really feels like everybody's response to it is highly individual and unique. And I suppose, you know, the film is great because, you know, one watches the film and the, the way it's cut will always be the same. Yes, of course. But of course, live theatre. Every night it's a kind of world premiere, if you like. It's a brand <laughs> new, sure. a brand new event, and the actors and I and you know everybody kind of juggles and uh, rolls with, uh, rolls with the, the way the audience choose to respond to it on any one given evening. Absolutely, again. yes. It's uh, it's the first night every night. It is indeed as <laughs> terrifying as yes, I'm sure. it is. I'm sure yeah, it is. That's a very good way of looking at it. Now, now um, after London, uh, it's the, the place going on tour, isn't it? To Liverpool, yeah, Leeds is. and Brighton. Yes, with Liverpool, Leeds and Brighton. I'm actually in Leeds at the moment rehearsing another play. Ah. And a beautiful thing will be playing opposite uh, our production of the Sherlock Holmes Best Kept Secret, which ah, is okay. a, a new play. So that it's very exciting that we'll have these two very different plays playing in the same theatre in Leeds. Um, and also the audience, because I guess in... Uh, Liverpool and Brighton will yeah. get a chance to see the yeah. repeat as well. Interesting. I mean, I, my, I'm bound to ask this question, as, as this is this is a, uh, a pride life, um, pride life from Norwich. Uh -huh. Is are there any plans to bring the play to Norwich? Because we'd love to see it, and you know, we go down a stall. Well, not at the moment. Oh, I shame. think if we're honest, I mean, we always knew it's a great piece of writing, but I think the production and the you know, the play has been received with such warmth. It really has been quite yes. overwhelming. And I would like to hope that there will be some kind of future for this production beyond the three touring venues in London. Yeah. And I would hope that our brilliant producer, Tom O'Connell, would certainly look at bringing it to Norwich. Because, you know, I've had shows to tour into the Theatre Royal before. Yes. You've yes. got such incredible audiences, such an incredible theatre there that I hope... You know, if there were a future life for this production, Norwich would absolutely be on the on the radar. So I do hope it's, so. It's a no at the moment, but okay. let's not rule anything out. Well, uh, I in hope the not. Have a word with your producer. Go on. You know, I you will could. do. And you hopefully, could. he's listening in, and he'll he'll be inspired to um, to, to, to take it to you know more towns and cities. Okay. Well, I, I know you're very busy. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to, to talk to us today. To been, to you, absolutely. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much, Nikolai. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Great to talk to you. All you. the best. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.